morning and welcome to St Philip's Online. My name's Richard, I'm the vicar. My name's Emma, I am the youth worker. And before we begin, we've got just a few notices as things begin to change a little around here. We wanted to let you know that the community larder still happens every single Tuesday from 12 o'clock till 1.15. If you would like to come along and would find that useful, just turn up, you'd be really, really welcome. Youth and children's work is still happening, however we are meeting on Zoom rather than in person. So children's work is every Sunday morning with Lisa and youth work is going to change a bit but updates will be sent to parents about that which will be on a Sunday evening. If you want to be kept up to date generally with what's happening at St Phillips, do drop us an email, you'll find our email address on our website. Let us know you'd like to be part of the weekly mailing and we'll keep you informed that way. I'm really excited to let you know that speaking later in this service is Jimmy Rocks. Jimmy is our mission partner who lives and works in Florinopolis in Brazil. It'll be really great to welcome him and to hear what he has to share with us this morning. But before that, we're going to start with some worship. So let me pray. Father God, I thank you that we're able to meet, uh, albeit online. Uh, I thank you for our community and I pray that you protect us and you keep us safe and that uh, we learn more about you and more about the mission work uh, as we go on this morning. Amen. Amen. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our song be a sign we are here for you we are here for you let your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your life we are here for you We are here for you. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. shout be your anthem your renown fill the skies we are here for you we are here for you let your word move in power let what's dead come to life we are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are our one desire you alone are holy only you are worthy god let your fire fall down we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcomed in this place to you our 
our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. God, let your fire fall down. faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours you are Grace abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. And I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours You are mine Oh, oh And you are mine Oh Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon your eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your heart and praise for I am yours you are Thank you, Martin, so much for leading us. As we said at the beginning of the service, we're just really thrilled that Jimmy Rocks is able to join us um, to share with us today. Uh, I've had the privilege of, of hearing what it is that Jimmy's going to share already. So it, 
I just want to commend it to you. It's a great message. Uh, Rachel's going to read for us and then Jemmy's going to share. Today's reading is from John chapter 5 verses 16 to 20. So, because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, to your amazement, he will show him even greater things than these. This is the word of the Lord. Hey, St. Philip's lovely uh, to be with you uh, virtually this morning. It was lovely to be with you earlier on this year, joining your PCC and um, being around for your Ash Wednesday service as well uh, before the pandemic kicked off. We look forward to seeing you again next time we're in the UK, which we imagine will be sometime around the very end of next year or uh, in 2020. To. Uh, today I just want to talk to you and encourage us from our reading, talk about the work of the Holy Spirit in us and around us. Uh, in our reading from John 5 today we saw how uh, Jesus uh, only did what he saw his Father doing. Jesus lived a life where he was dependent upon uh, the Holy Spirit. We read in Luke's Gospel that after he was baptised the Holy Spirit came upon him and he was led into the wilderness but he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus models for us as Christians what it is to live a life dependent upon the Holy Spirit. And there's a real obedience to him. He would only do what he saw his father doing. You know, and that is a model for us as Christians. We look for what God is doing, God the Father is doing through the person of the Holy Spirit who Jesus uh, has left with us. I think that's a great promise in Scripture. Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans, but I'll send a helper. You know, he will send an advocate, the spirit of truth, who will lead us in all truth. And that uh, we are, in, in the Christian life, we're dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Already we should be dependent on the Holy Spirit and cultivate an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he facilitates our connection with the Father. Uh, Paul picks up on this in Romans. He talks about how uh, his spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, testifies with our spirit that we are God's children, that we are heirs, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Also earlier on in Romans, Paul says that our hope does not disappoint us because uh, the Spirit has poured out the love of the Father into our hearts. And the Holy Spirit, he makes the love of God tangible. He makes the love of God real to us. The turning point in, in, in my journey of faith was doing an Alpha course on, on the Holy Spirit weekend. Having an encounter with the Holy Spirit of all people as he poured out the love of God into my heart. I remember just praying in a time of prayer ministry Jesus, I want, you, I, I want you in my life. I want your Holy Spirit. And just feeling this incredible warmth and love just being poured out inside. And that was a real turning point for me. As before that, when I prayed, it felt like my prayers would hit the ceiling and come back. But after that, when I prayed, I could sense the nearness of God. I'd accepted Jesus and the Holy Spirit started to dwell in me. And I had that connection and continue to have that connection with the Father. And that's something that's really needed at a time like this. I imagine actually for some of you, it may be a real frustration as you head back into a time of lockdown as well. Um, but know that God is with you. He is with you by the Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage you to pray a simple prayer. 
daily, that you set aside time to pray this and to wait for this invite to be taken up. And that prayer is a simple prayer that many of us pray in new wine churches and vineyard churches. We lead a vineyard church out here and we simply pray in all of our services, come Holy Spirit. We pray that and we wait for him to come to accept that invite and to do what he wants to do. I just want to read to you a quote uh, from a booklet uh, produced by the Vineyard about this very theme, about that very simple prayer. It says the following, the prayer, come Holy Spirit, is an invitation for the Spirit of God to move in any way he chooses in us, in our church and in the world around us. It's also a powerful, sometimes dangerous prayer that has been prayed from ancient times to today. So when we pray, come Holy Spirit, often he comes. Often he fills us with that peace, with love, but also in, in, in a variety of different situations, we can pray, come Holy Spirit. We had quite a scary thing happen here a few years ago with uh, a team of young people who came out on mission. Um, they, they, they went into to the sea and, and, and the currents were really quite strong on that particular day. And whilst they're, they're enjoying it, the realization for some of those young people who were in the water was that the currents were taking them out. And some of them began to panic and they were in there with a, an experienced swimmer, but also uh, he's a mature Christian as well. And he formed a human chain with them. And uh, he, he just prayed this simple prayer come Holy Spirit. And as he prayed that, uh, those young people who were kind of in panic mode just felt a real peace come over them in that moment as they just felt the presence of God. And fortunately, a wave that kind of pushed them in came in as well. And some of the people who were nearby came and uh, assisted them. But in a variety of different situations, we can pray that prayer, come Holy Spirit, in our own quiet times, Come Holy Spirit and allow him to come and fill us. We can pray that when we're with other believers in church meetings. Come Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will come and, and, and fill that place, fill that atmosphere. But also out and about as well, we can pray that prayer. Come Holy Spirit. As a church, we like to go out on the streets and pray for people. And uh, as we pray that simple prayer, invite the Holy Spirit incredible stuff happens. Uh, 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 two weeks ago, uh, we did our kind of first evangelism, church-wide evangelism back after the, uh, you know, d- during this kind of COVID period that we're all in, um, going out with masks, hand sanitizer, but but approaching those who are around and uh, we we're with some of the teenagers, I was with some of the teenagers from our church and we approached the, uh, a group of teenagers as well and uh, doing a bit of a survey to find out about faith. And then we just simply said, well, can we pray for you? And is there anything we can pray for? Do any of you have any pain in your body? And uh, one related that he had a, a, a bad foot, uh, and another uh, bad headaches. So we prayed for those guys, prayed first for the guy with the, with the bad foot and just in front of his friends, prayed for healing, invited the Holy Spirit, uh, prayed prayers of command his pain went he was completely pain free we found out afterwards that he had broken his foot prior to that he had never been right in an skateboarding accident never been right he was really gobsmacked by the fact that his foot was now pain free his friends are very open and then we just prayed for him in a group uh, prayed for the guy with the headache as well for healing he was healed and we prayed for them in a group and simply invited the holy spirit and they felt the peace of god they felt like a weight was lifted off them. In many circumstances, we can pray that prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and wait on him to lead, to direct us, trusting that he would do good things in us and around us. And I also want to encourage us that God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And the Holy Spirit, he's not reserved for special people. You know, in the New Testament, what we see is that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all. The promise in Joel was, 
in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, young, old, you know, male, female. The spirit of God is indiscriminate. Okay. And God, he wants to fill you with his spirit. He wants you to cultivate an intimate relationship with his spirit. And he wants to use you. Often we have many excuses for why God can't use us. I don't know enough. Uh, I'm not holy enough. Uh, I don't have the relevant, I don't have spiritual gifts. You know, there are many reasons we put um, in front of us as reasons why God doesn't want to use us. I want to say to you that God will use anyone who is open and available. And I think often it's helpful just to de demystify how the Spirit works through us as well. Perhaps sometimes many of us are guilty of thinking, you know, if the Spirit's going to lead me and guide me, something dramatic's going to happen. There's going to be an audible voice. The heavens are going to depart. I'm going to see a huge hand come and God point to someone or something. And in my experience, actually, the leading of the Spirit is very subtle. God often speaks in that still, small voice. And actually, we need to slow ourselves down and cultivate an intimate relationship with him just to be sensitive to that to not miss that often god doesn't speak in very dramatic ways but even as we follow those impressions that god gives us that could be very dramatic and life-changing for other people when i first started uh praying for uh taking more risks with praying for people out on the streets and trying to ask god what are you doing in this situation uh, I remember how one time where uh, at a youth barbecue at our church, we encouraged our young people to, to bring their friends and was chatting to this girl who came to visit um, and uh, was praying the whole time in this conversation. God, give me something for her. She was talking a bit about being into spiritualism and spiritual things, was trying to encourage her to you know come to church if you're a spiritual person. Yeah, I think you'd like it. Um, and the whole time, God, give me something for her. And the only thing that came to me, or the only thing I had, was this sensation at my back, sort of midway at my back. But I thought, do you know what? That could be the Lord. And as she got up to leave, I just stopped her. This was after our conversation. Just, hey, by any chance, have you got some pain here on your back? And she was like, yeah. How do you know that? And I just explained, well, you know, sometimes God will uh, tell me something about someone, give me an impression because he wants to do something in their lives and I life and I believe he wants to heal you to show you he loves you. Can we pray for you? And she said, yes, you can. So I called over one of our female uh, youth leaders and the friend who brought her and said, can we put our hand on, on your back and, and we'll, we'll pray for Jesus to heal you? She said, that's fine. So we began to pray simple prayers, be healed in Jesus' name, back be healed pain be gone and I was asking for feedback as we were praying what what can you feel what's going on she said it's getting really really hot the pain is going afterwards I asked her to do something she couldn't do before she started to wiggle it and found out that there was no pain there I said what do you make of that and she was like that's amazing she explained how she would have fallen down the stairs and her back and it was never right but that that was her story and um other things happened subsequent to that. But it really was started just by an impression that I could have dismissed. You know, thinking, ah, oh, that's, that's just me. And, and many times where I've seen God's leading, I've seen, uh, it, it, it's been with impressions. It's been with sudden thoughts. It's been maybe with a sensation in my body. And I want to encourage you to be open to those nudges of the Holy Spirit. Like I say, sometimes it can feel very undramatic. But that doesn't mean it's not God and it won't bless someone. Often it's quite brave, actually, to act on one of those nudges. You know, it was John Wimber, founder of the Vineyard Church, who said that faith is spelled R-I-S-K. It's spelled risk. It's about taking risks. We get an impression, we get a nudge, and then the faith is acting on that, taking that risk. Even this week, someone sent me uh, an email of an impression they had for me about what God was speaking into my family life and it was just really um, 
accurate and a blessing and a confirmation to me but the person described it as an extra thought that they felt could be from the Lord they don't know anything about my life or things but they shared what they sensed God had given them in a time of praying for us as a family and it was a tremendous blessing for me don't dismiss those nudges and those impressions or also don't fall into this thing of if you know if it's God working or God leading it's got to be dramatic I want to encourage you to, to start a rhythm of praying come Holy Spirit fill me but also to ask the Holy Spirit show me what you're doing show me what you're doing around so like Jesus I can join in with that and partner with you and I don't know what the Spirit may show you where he may lead you but I want to encourage you take risks go with that he, he may direct you to pray for someone he may direct you to share something to encourage someone he may direct you to a new ministry a new work go with it he may direct you to do something quite scary to share a word with someone um, who, who's not a believer or to offer to pray for someone I, I believe that in this as we act on how the spirit is nudging us and guiding us God loves our obedience, even when we get it wrong. And, you know, the Bible says we prophesy in part. We know in part. But I believe that when we act in obedience uh, on those nudges and direction from the Spirit of God, God is pleased with that. And I also want to say that God is not limited by lockdown as well. Uh, my brother, uh, who lives in Northern Ireland, rang me recently as well with his back in pain he's not necessarily a believer but very open uh to god but doesn't know jesus yeah and uh, during the course of the conversation i said can i pray for your back he was like yeah go go for it and uh he his back was kind of uh, a bit twisted it had gone into spasm uh he was in a lot of pain so i just said why don't you put your hand on your back and we're going to pray over the video call and as we did that uh the pain went his back was straightened, he could he had uh, regained mobility and was impacted by that. And really the Holy Spirit is not limited um, in any way. And be creative as you seek to follow the Spirit's leading and guidance. And also as well, the final thought is that as you're perhaps in a time of lockdown again, and it's a very disruptive period for all of us really, um around the world but i also think it's a time for a, a spiritual reset in terms of where where we're um where we're investing our time our resources and our energy and i think on an individual level but also on a church level it's an opportunity to pray god show me what you're doing so that we can join in show us where you want us to to go and that's been something as a church and for me personally as well, I've been challenged by in this time of praying for God to show me where he's at work by his spirit and wanting to join in that, believing that actually when we join in with what the spirit is doing, where he's leading us, that's where we see greater fruit. Guys, it's been lovely to be with you. Pray that God will bless you, fill you with his spirit. Amen. It's so great to have Jimmy share with us. Uh, I love what he said about the Holy Spirit not being limited by lockdown um, and just that encouragement to just walk in step with the Spirit, forming that habit of, of inviting him to come in all of the different circumstances of life. So why don't we just take a moment to do that? Let's invite him to come right now where we are. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for your word that we've just heard. And Lord, we want to pray again. Come Holy Spirit. We pray that you would come right now, wherever we are. And that you would do what you want to do.
as we're waiting upon him, it might be that some of us sense him speaking to us. And if we're watching this live, I want to encourage you to just post the word that you feel God speaking to you um, so that others might benefit from it. I had a, a picture of a, of a daffodil um, at this time of year and it, and it was a picture and, and the thing I was drawn to was the sense that it was something that was out of season, fruitful, but out of season. Um, and maybe that's an encouragement to somebody who's maybe, I don't know, maybe you're thinking about something or that seems maybe it's the wrong time or the wrong season, but actually sometimes things can be fruitful even when it seems out of season. I don't know if that's something that means something to you. But if you feel the Lord speaking to you, why don't you post it in the chat? Um, it might be that what he's saying to you will be a real encouragement for others. So let's, um, let's seek to just form that habit of just inviting the Spirit to come in all the different situations of our lives. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to pray now for our world, for its needs. But do continue just to post uh, what you sense the Lord saying to you. I'm going to hand over to Emma for our prayers. Father God, we pray this morning for our world as we are still fighting the coronavirus. I pray that you bring strength to our nurses that are caring for us. You bring protection over ourselves and our families and our friends and that you support those who have lost loved ones due to this virus. We pray for the teachers and all support staff in schools, that you continue to strengthen them and help them as they go in every day still and teach and mingle and mix with lots of students. Father, we pray that you protect them and you keep them safe. And we pray for our young people as they're going into school still, that you keep them safe and that they're not worried about becoming a carrier and passing it on to their families. We pray that you keep everyone's mental health safe and you just continue to show your love for us. Father, we pray for the recent election in America we pray over Donald Trump as he steps down from his role and we pray for Joe Biden as he comes in in January. We pray that he, there's a smooth change and that America are accepting of this change. Father, we pray for our community. We thank you that we're in an area that has currently had not too many uh, COVID cases. We pray for your continued protection in this. And Father, we pray for those that may be struggling financially or uh, with health issues or that are feeling isolated. We pray that you show them your love and your care and you continue to protect them. And Father, I pray that you encourage and strengthen us so that we might speak into their lives and so that we may feel like we can help them. And Father, I pray for our young people. I pray that you continue to teach them about your love and that you continue to encourage and empower them. We pray for those that may be being exploited in this time as they're becoming more and more vulnerable. We pray that you cover them and shelter them, that you keep them safe from those kinds of situations. And for their families, Lord, that they 
are also feeling protected and cared for. And Father, I pray for our church. I pray that we are, st I thank you that we are still able to meet, uh, even though it's online or on Zoom. I thank you that we're still able to carry on with the community ladder and build up relationships with those in our community through that and that we're able to help out those that are struggling. I pray for leaders of churches at the moment that you give them wisdom and you help them in decisions about what's coming up like Christmas uh, and heading into the new year, how everything's going to look in amongst this pandemic. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship Your holy name You're rich in love And you're slow to anger Your name is great and your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise. Unending Ten thousand years And then forevermore Bless the Lord Oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh I'll worship your holy name I will worship your holy for joining us today we hope you enjoyed worship uh, we are very excited to welcome our archdeacon julie connelty next week uh, who is going to come and speak to us but as we close let's pray together 
Father, we want to thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for the privilege of being able to draw close to you in worship. Thank you for the privilege of being able to hear from your word and share in ministry across the world. And thank you for the opportunity to bring before you the needs of our world and our communities. And Father, we want to pray that as we go from here, Lord, we would go filled with your spirit to live and work for you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, be with those that you love and remain with you always.